so fun to have you here. I've been waiting. Oh, I'm Just sorry. Am I late? No, no. It's early by political. Wait, political time. Oh, no, okay. I'm a teacher. Sorry. I'm always on time. Yay, yeah. the teacher. Yes. <laughs> Everyone, thank you all for coming today. Thank you for coming to see Dr. Biden. It's so exciting. And before she comes up and blows us all away, I want to introduce myself. My name's Akshay. I'm one of the organizers here in Cedar Rapids. And real quickly, um, I'm kind of shocked that I'm here standing in front of her because this wasn't really supposed to happen. Uh, <laughs> I mean, a month ago, I was sitting in a corporate office in Los Angeles just typing away in a computer for eight hours a day. And I got an email all of a sudden, and within five hours of that email, I quit my job and leased my apartment and came here to Wow! Hey. Wow! This is awesome, and uh, I'm so happy to be here. Uh, I came out here not because it's glamorous to knock on doors for eight hours a day and then call all of you at In minus four night. degrees, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 uh, but it's fulfilling work and it's something that needed to be done because we need someone like Joe Biden to be president. Yes. Yes. We need someone who understands the dignity of work in this country, that understands the values we hold dear. We need someone who understands the commitment to education that we need in this country, and that's why Dr. Biden, Absolutely. I'm so excited to be here today, because <laughs> Dr. Biden <laughs> is the utmost supporter of great education in this country, and it's something we hold so dear. And I know my parents really value how hard education is, but how important it is and how it can really lift you up. So, with that, I want to introduce Dr. Biden. Yes. And thank you for coming. So, thank you, Akshay. That was beautiful. <laughs> I, I mean, see the commitment of people in this country who want to make a change. It's people like Akshay who have, I mean, unbelievably quit their jobs, left their families, left their home states and traveled here to Iowa to make a change. So I want to thank all the people who are here on Team Biden for all that you were doing and, and continuing to do. And you will forever have a place in my heart and in Joe's heart for all that you are so committed to doing. So thank you all so very much. So I want you to think for one minute back to the night of November 8th, 2016. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Remember how you felt when Florida went red? Remember watching the results on the TV and seeing Pennsylvania and then Wisconsin? Do you remember when those results came in and you sort of held your breath? Or how about that sick feeling that you had the morning after yes. oh. when you realized, when you woke up and you realized that we had lost the election? And, you know, look at who we had lost the election to. Yeah. And I know a lot of us felt helpless and we wondered if that arc of the moral universe was like veering off course. We couldn't believe that this had happened. And since then, with every tweet, with every swipe, you know, the president has tried to fundamentally change everything we accomplished in the Obama-Biden administration. He wants us to believe that we are angry and divided and hateful, doesn't he? Yeah. But that is not who we are. For the cruelty and the corruption and the cowardice we've seen over these past few years, it has become clear that America is so much bigger than one person or one party. We've seen people across the country, like Akshay, answering the call to stand up for their neighbors, to show up for their communities, like each and every one of you here who has come today to volunteer. We have shown that our nation still beats with courage and kindness. So, though it might be hard to look back, and it is, you know, I know that a better future is waiting for us. So I want you to think of that future. I want you to think of 2021, one year from now. 
So it's a beautiful morning like today, but we'll have a little bit more sun. <laughs> <laughs> and you're sipping your morning coffee. And you pick up the morning paper and you open it up and the headline isn't about some late night tweet storm. <laughs> Instead, it's about how our children are going to benefit from universal pre-K. It's about how teachers across this country are going to get the pay raise they deserve. That's right. Yeah. How many teachers are here? How many teachers are here? Thank you, teachers. Thank you for coming. I feel so supportive. And you read about how we're investing in wind energy and green technology that's going to create jobs right here in Iowa. And when you, when you turn on the television, I, I usually do that, don't you, in the morning to sort of get the weather? Although I have to admit, here, last week, when I looked at that TV, it said minus four. I was sending pictures of the TV and said to my friends, like, I can't even believe this. So anyway, you turn on the TV, and the anchors aren't talking about how we're on the brink of some ill-advised war. Like... Remember 10 days ago when we heard about Iraq and Iran? Aren't you thinking, oh my God, I hope I don't wake up tomorrow morning and we're in a war, yes. mm -hmm. right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So instead, they're talking about how we're going to build on the Affordable Care Act with a public option and bringing down the cost of prescription. <laughs> and they're reporting that finally, finally, someone is standing up to the NRA and keeping yes. our kids and our neighbors <laughs> of the United States, you don't turn the channel. <laughs> you call in your kids and your grandkids from the other room because you want them to hear what the President of the United States has to say. A commander in chief that you can feel proud of. A leader who brings people together instead of tearing families apart like we saw at the border of this country. A president that you can be proud of, who believes that our best days are ahead of us. And that's Joe Biden, and that's my husband, who's going to be the next president. That's the future I want. And I know it's the future you want, too, or you wouldn't all be here ready to make phone calls and go on out canvassing and knocking on doors. So I know that some of you are still making up your minds. Is that right? Yeah. Not in here. <laughs> <laughs> this lady said yes, yeah, so I'm just going to talk to her. <laughs> so, if you're still making up your mind, I want to give you three really, really strong arguments of why you should support my husband, Joe Biden, for president. Number one, independent voters. Joe is the only one who can appeal to independence. He's not too far left. He's not too far right. He's right in the middle. He's a moderate. And a lot of uh, Republicans have whispered to me very privately, Jill, I made a mistake before. I'm a Republican, but Donald Trump is not who he said he was. I'm a Republican, but I can support Joe. That's reason number one. You ready for two? Okay, number two, swing states. So Joe is the only one who can beat Donald Trump in the swing states of Pennsylvania, Ohio, Wisconsin, Michigan, and Florida, and right here in Iowa. <laughs> The most. Doesn't that matter to you? Yes, it does. Yes. Okay. All right. We almost got her. We're, we're almost there. <laughs> and number three, achievability. Joe's policies are achievable. He knows how he's going to pay for them. He's not going to say, oh, free this, free that. Maybe it's a trillion dollars. We'll worry about it later. No. Joe has plans. He's not going to increase the national debt. He knows how he's going to pay for everything, or he won't do it. So his plans are achievable. That's the kind of president we need. So I don't want you to leave with any questions in your mind. And um, so if you want to come talk to me, 
you can, you know, come up to me privately. A lot of Iowans do that. I understand. I'm a teacher. If you don't want to speak out in a group, I, I certainly honor that. I know a lot of my students feel the same way. Or it may be a private conversation you want to have. So I'm happy to answer questions. But um, so before we leave, we have to hear her answer, right? <laughs> <laughs> I loved what he said Monday, okay. he's on a prairie hill, uh, about psychologists. Oh, the mental young, health, right? Yes, for the, yes, because I was in kindergarten and our little ones that you knew were in trouble. Exactly. They, so you're a teacher, they, a kindergarten teacher? I used to be. Uh -huh. But they're the ones that really need the help when they're little. That's oh, proven. absolutely. But they don't get it because there's mm -hmm. older kids that are more dangerous. So do you know what Joe Biden's education plan says? He says, number one, we're going to triple the funding for Title I schools, for the schools that need it. That the money will go to the teachers and resources. What does that mean? It's going to double the number of psychologists and counselors who are in the schools. I am a teacher. I have been fighting for mental health in our schools. Our kids are coming. They're bringing poverty, food insecurity, domestic violence. They need help. Not only that, the teachers are saying to me, Jill, it's too much. We're trying to teach English or social studies. Our kids are coming to us because there's nobody at home. They're working two or three jobs. They come to us because they trust us. Isn't that right? Don't you feel that? Oh, yes. yes. So one of the things Joe is going to work on is mental health in rural communities. Can I tell you, right here in Iowa, Three days ago, I had a woman come up to me privately, and she said, Jill, your husband has to work on climate change. And I said, well, well, of course, you know, it's one of the first things he'll do is sign the agreement, the Paris Agreement. And she said, yeah, but our farm was flooded. And she said, twice. She said, the first time we recouped, we got back up on our feet. The second time, we lost everything. And she said, Jill... My husband had a nervous breakdown, and I had to put him in a health care facility. And she said, I'm alone on our farm. And she said, I don't know what to do. The suicide rate of farmers, of farmers, is skyrocketing. I wish the, the rest of America knew that about rural America. So Joe is going to put mental health clinics in rural America. We need to build our hospitals, the infrastructure, better schools, rural America, urban America. Joe Biden is for all Americans. And I think you've got to feel that in your heart because he will make the best president. He understands the problems of all Americans. His father lost his job and um, had to leave the family and go to work in Wilmington from Scranton. His father couldn't pay for the school he wanted to go to for college. He suffered loss and tragedy. He empathizes with Americans. We need a president who can heal this nation. Heal this nation. And I think that's what everybody is looking for. So I promise you, I promise you, if you decide on Joe Biden as your candidate, when you see him... On Inauguration Day, he is going to be the president that you can feel proud of. Mm -hmm. so thank you. Actually, this is like Aunt Sally. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, thank you for coming. I know that we all want a better, bigger... America, and thank you for your faith in that we can build a better nation if we do this together. So thank you, everybody, for being here. Thank you. thank you all for coming. Um, we do have important business. Um, if you aren't already signed up for volunteering, if you aren't already signed up for phone calls, please help us make Joe Biden the next president. We need phone calls. We need you to walk doors. Please go to the back, talk to our organizers. They're going to be walking around. Make sure you're ready to talk to some voters, all right? Thank you. Thank you.